Making your own mod in Minecraft server is not very difficult, and I'm going to prove it to you. My name is John, and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to set up your own Mine Colony's dedicated server on Windows for you and your friends to play on. Since this video has no sponsor, I wanted to take a quick second to tell you a little bit about a project that I've been working on. Every single video on my YouTube channel that has done even remotely well has either been centered around my home lab or around Minecraft. And because of that, I started thinking, what could I do to combine these two subjects and provide something to you, the viewer, that would actually be valuable? The more I thought about it, the more I realized that it could potentially be relatively difficult for somebody to run both a dedicated server and the client side of a mod pack at the exact same time. And so I realized I already have the hardware thanks to my home lab to be able to run a whole bunch of these servers at the same time. So why not set them up and just let you guys use them? I currently have my main vanilla server and 15 modded Minecraft servers up and running right now. But by the end of this, I plan to have well over 150 total servers running at once. The goal of this project is simply to allow friends to be able to play with each other on a server without one of them having to take the incredible performance hit of actually having to run that server for themselves. Again, this is totally free, so please feel free to share the server information with whoever you think might actually use it. Okay, back to the video. So the first step in setting up any modded Minecraft server is downloading the modded Minecraft server files. And the easiest way to do that for mine colonies is through a website called CurseForge. So open up Chrome or Firefox, whatever you use for your internet browser, and then go to curseforge.com. And once you've made it to the website, you'll click on Minecraft, and then up here at the top, you're gonna search for the mod pack we're looking for, which in this case is mine colonies. The server we're setting up is this mine colonies official, and so we'll click on that one. Next, we're gonna click the files tab. You're gonna to wanna to click on the Mine Colonies official 1.18.1 v11, and then scroll down here and click on the server files right here. Click the actions of downloading, and then that'll download it for you. Click on that, and then go ahead and download it from right here. And then once that's downloaded, we need to next install Java. So for this particular mod pack, we're actually gonna be using Java 17. In order to download that, all you have to do is in the same Chrome browser we were looking at earlier, search for Java 17 download. It'll be the second link here. Click on the Java 17 tab and then make sure you're on the Windows tab and then it'll be the 64-bit installer right here in the middle. Now I will say it's a very straightforward installation so if you need any help, now I will say it's a very straightforward installation so I won't walk you through that. Now I do recommend you creating some sort of folder structure just so that you can have everything for your server in the same place, especially if you ever end up setting another server up, it's nice to have some sort of a folder structure so you can keep everything organized. Now once it's downloaded, you're gonna go ahead and paste that inside of your folder Right-click it, click Properties, make sure it's unblocked, click Apply, right-click again, click Extract All, and extract it to the folder that you created. Now, once it's done, your folder should look something like this. First thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure the EULA has been accepted. Should be true, but it's always good to check. And then you're gonna double-click on this run.bat. Now, I do think that they may have unintentionally messed up the start.bat for this server because when you open it, um, it, it it's definitely a little messed up. So. I'm gonna post what I changed down in the description below. But basically all we're doing is we're taking all of that off. We're just leaving Java here. It's passing the Java user arguments, and then it's going to the libraries and it's pulling the Windows RTXT. This is exactly what it should be. Um, and then we can save that and close it. Now you also can at this point, open up server properties and change a couple things in there. I'm gonna change the JVM RX to uh, make sure that this uses 12 gigs of RAM max and then a minimum of 10 gigs. I'm gonna save that, close out of it, and then double click the run.bat. Now at this point, it will start setting up your Minecraft server and it'll start downloading a whole bunch of stuff for the first initial launch. Now, since we've already accepted the end user license agreement, it also will actually start into the first launch as soon as it's done downloading everything. Uh, so we won't even have to relaunch it. It may pop up asking if you want to allow access to public networks, just click allow access there and it'll continue loading everything. Now from this point, you basically have a working server. The next step would be to set up port forwarding so that your friends can join your server. I wish there was like a single way to do that, but unfortunately every single router is a little bit different. Uh, and so the easiest way to really learn how to do that uh, for your specific router is to Google how to port forward on whatever router model that you have. Uh, there's gonna be a ton of links online for how to do that. Every single company that makes a router also makes instruction guides on how to port forward. Uh, so you're gonna wanna port forward for the IP that this computer is running on to the port 25565 internal to external. Uh, that'll be the default that Minecraft uses, and so it'll be the default one that your friends' uh, Minecraft clients are gonna be looking for to join your server. 
So once you have the server running and you have port forwarding set up, the only things your friends will need is your public IP address in order to join your Minecraft server. Now, this is different from your local private IP address. And in order to get that, the easiest way is to Google what is my public IP address. And the first link there will tell you exactly what that is. This is what you're going to need to give to your friends so that they can put that in the multiplayer address box uh, to join your server. So there you have it. You have a working mine colony server, you have port forwarding set up, and your friends can join through your public IP address. Now, if you have any questions or issues with this, any technical issues that you run into, please feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join my Discord. We have a lot of people jump in there and ask questions for how to set up their own servers, and we tend to walk them through that pretty quickly. Also, again, like we mentioned earlier, if you're running into some troubles with your computer hardware being able to support both the server and the client side of this mod pack at the same time, we will have this one set up and available for you to join. It's a public server, free for you and anybody else to use. Also, you made it this far in the video. You might as well go ahead and like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.